kind of care is there for someone who can't do all they used to do? What can I do to mom's home to make things easier and safer for her? How do I figure out when it's time for my mom to move into some sort of facility? I know I need some extra help these days, but I'm not sure how to get it. Questions. For many of us, growing older brings new questions. Probably things you haven't had to ask before. Maybe things you don't even know to ask. Fortunately, there are answers. Choices. Positive ways to handle the challenges that so often come along with growing older. Often the answers lie in finding a plan that's right for the senior who needs support, as well as the loved ones who want to help them. This video is part of a series that the InConnect Alliance has developed to help you navigate caregiving transitions, anticipate medical needs, and help ensure financial stability so that your loved ones have the best quality of life as they age. Together, we'll take a look at important considerations and steps you can take to plan ahead and make sure that an aging individual has the right care in the right place. So how do you know when to start planning for the future? Well, the earlier the better, of course. But often, there comes a time when family members notice a change is taking place. So when I got to mom's house, I don't think she had done laundry for a month. She wanted me to take her out to buy some new clothes so she'd have something clean to wear. Yeah, and dinner wasn't great, was it? The turkey was so undercooked, no one wanted to touch it. And I think the butter was spoiled. Uh, probably because it's been sitting on the counter for the last month and a half. Yeah, I don't know. She's having a hard time. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? As loved ones age, their care needs also change. Adult children may not live nearby, and often these changes become more noticeable during family gatherings, like holidays and celebrations. A loved one may struggle with getting around, or you may notice that home upkeep may not be what it was before. These types of things may indicate they need more help. And even though you may not get to spend as much time with your loved ones as before, you can help ensure they have the right care plan. Having the right care plan means making sure that a senior's living space is safe, comfortable, and will meet their needs both now and in the future. And going forward, a senior's needs should be assessed on a regular basis so that their caregivers are prepared to assist them and help maintain their quality of life. Sound like a daunting task? Well, finding the right place and right care for your senior loved one can seem like an intimidating job but there are a number of simple steps that you can take to make the process simpler and more manageable. Well, whatever we do, we can't just go making decisions for her. No, she'd hate that. I think we all would. It's vitally important that you keep your loved one involved as much as you can in every step of the process and try to look at things from their point of view. No one at any age likes to lose control of their decisions, even though at times that does become necessary. As you prepare to become a caregiver, remember that your senior is the true expert on how they want to live their life. So put their preferences first by engaging the senior and their most trusted loved ones and asking questions to find out what's important to them. Being empathetic and keeping seniors engaged will help you find the right place and the right care for your aging loved one's specific situation and values. So, how do you get started? A good way to start is by evaluating the various needs seniors may have. First, look at the senior's physical health needs. By fully understanding the current level of medical care needed, you can better plan for future needs. So, look at any existing medical conditions or previous injuries their mobility, any chronic health issues, and medications they need, and the frequency of their access to regular medical care. Assess their mental and cognitive health needs. Dementia is a medical condition that includes a group of symptoms that together affect a person's memory, normal thinking, communicating, and reasoning ability. Dementia may become more prevalent as a person becomes older. Often the onset of dementia is difficult to notice at first. However, over time, 
The symptoms of dementia make it difficult to perform even simple daily tasks, such as bathing and eating. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia. Dementia can include a wide range of both obvious and subtle impairments in thought, communication, and memory. This can include misplacing items, confusion with time or place, personality or mood changes, and unwise financial decisions. Understanding a senior's cognitive and mental health needs can help you determine the right place and right care for them. A physician can evaluate and determine the level of impairment. Be sure to find out about your senior's social, spiritual, and community needs. Does the senior have social groups established, or are they more solitary? Do they value having access to a faith community? Do they want to stay connected to community-based organizations? Asking questions like these will help you as you consider where your loved one would like to live as their needs change. Mom, I really think we should talk about the daily task you're having trouble with. I brought that checklist I told you about. Can we go through it together? No, dear, I'm fine. So please don't worry about me. Mom, I really think it'll help with our planning. And I want to help. But these are things I have a hard time talking about. We love you, and we want to make things easier for you. Let's take a look at it then. So all you have to do... A great tool to help you assess the situation of your senior loved one is the Activities of Daily Living Checklist. Basically, this checklist helps caregivers evaluate a person's ability to care for themselves. It focuses on five key areas. It helps you evaluate the person's personal hygiene, the ability to take a bath, groom themselves, and brush their teeth. It includes an evaluation of the ability to make appropriate clothing decisions and physically dress and undress oneself. It looks at the ability to feed oneself, though not necessarily the ability to cook. It evaluates the ability to maintain continence and looks at both the mental and physical capacity to use a restroom, including the ability to get on and off the toilet and cleaning oneself. And the checklist looks at how capable a person is to move from being seated to standing, getting in and out of bed, and the ability to walk independently from one place to another. Depending on whether an individual can do these activities on their own, or if they rely on a family caregiver for assistance, can help you determine their current level of independence. As your loved one ages, there are many options for providing the added support they will so often need. In many situations, alternatives to living alone or in the family home may need to be considered. When this is the case, the idea of change may be met with resistance, and ultimately, the decision to move is up to the senior. The good news is that there are plenty of choices, and you can help them understand each by discussing and weighing their options to make the best possible choice of where they should live. Let's take a look at the options available. Mom, I'm really worried about you being home alone so much. Maybe we should talk about some options. I'm not moving to an institution. I'm fine right here. I don't need someone watching over me all the time. Oh, Mom, maybe you don't have to leave. There are a lot of resources that can help you stay right here and help you be safe. I wasn't ready to have this conversation with you today. Okay, Mom, but we're just discussing. Many seniors hope or plan to age in place in their own homes or with family. This is certainly the number one option for most families. There are a number of steps you can take to make sure that the independent living setting is both safe and comfortable. To make a home safe for an older individual, educate yourself on changes you can make to accommodate seniors with medical conditions and mobility issues. Let's take a brief look at some of the easy things that you can do to make your home safer for senior living. To begin, make sure you have smoke alarms and fire extinguishers. Make escape plans that the senior can manage. You can hold your own fire drills to make sure everyone is aware of what their own responsibilities are. It's a good idea to keep important phone numbers close at hand. If needed, install ramps over stairs and check door widths to allow for a wheelchair. Remove throw rugs that slip. Keep walkways open and move furniture that might tip easily if used for support. 
Bathrooms are a very common site for injuries in the home, and this is even more true for older individuals. To make the bathroom safer, you can install a raised toilet seat and add grab bars near the toilet and tub. Non-skid mats can help prevent falls in the tub, shower, and other places. A bath seat and handheld shower head can also greatly reduce the risk of falling. And it's a good idea to lower the temperature on the hot water heater to reduce the risk of burns. We all spend a lot of time in the bedroom, and there are a number of things you can do to help make it safer for your senior family member as well. Often, a hospital or special bed is needed, and an overbed table for eating and reading can also be a great help. A bedside intercom communication system can help caregivers stay in touch. Night lights in the room and hallways can help increase safety too. Some other modifications that you can use are handrails in the hallways, special handles for cups, pots, and silverware, and levers instead of doorknobs. As time goes on, circumstances often change, and other living options may need to be considered. Let's take a look at options beyond independent living. In-home care is a service that provides caregivers who will visit the home to help with the activities of daily living, including light housekeeping, grocery shopping, meal preparation, and grooming. Some provide additional services to help with personal hygiene. Caregivers can come as many times as you would like, but they generally don't provide medical care. Home health agencies provide medical care in your home. This is often a good option when your loved one is not in a hospital but is not well enough to be home alone. These skilled caregivers are certified to provide specific types of medical and nursing care, such as physical therapy and speech language pathology services. Community-based adult day services are an option that's becoming ever more common. It provides a wide range of social and support services in a group setting. They are often a great solution for seniors who want to stay social, but need supervision and help with the activities of daily living while their family members are at work. Continuing care communities offer a variety of housing options that support various stages of life. Spanning independent living, assisted living, or skilled nursing care, they enable residents to age in a single community without having to relocate as their needs evolve. Memory care communities provide a special kind of care for seniors with varying degrees of dementia or Alzheimer's. Often these seniors need attentive and expert care around the clock that is difficult to provide in the home. Memory care is an option that provides a structured environment with schedules and routines that minimize stress and cultivate cognitive skills for these seniors. Assisted living facilities specialize in providing care and supervision. They frequently offer services like planned activities, housekeeping and laundry, transportation, meals, exercise and wellness programs. Assisted living communities sometimes offer limited medical assistance, but not skilled nursing. Nursing facilities provide care to those with illnesses that require full-time monitoring medical care. Most skilled nursing residents live in semi-private rooms and meals are often provided. When a family member moves into a nursing home, you quickly learn that your role as a caregiver changes significantly. Instead of monitoring daily details of your loved one's life, you may become more of an advocate and a voice to help ensure the best possible care. The people at the facility where my dad lives tell me that I have to move him to a different facility. Can they do that? What are my dad's rights? The food at the facility where I live is cold when it should be hot, and the coffee's cold too. I've talked with the administrator and the kitchen staff and nothing has changed. Is there anything I can do about this? These situations can happen and often people have questions on what to do. The good news is the state of Indiana has a program to help residents and family members address some of these concerns and problems. A long-term care ombudsman is a trained professional that receives complaints and assists residents to resolve problems in situations involving quality of care, transfer and discharge, abuse, and other aspects of residents' rights. If you or your older loved one is experiencing problems with this type of situation, please contact your state or local long-term care ombudsman for more information at one 800 622 Eight four. I 
have so many questions. Do you think insurance will cover any of these kinds of costs? And if not, can we provide some of the care ourselves? First, we should see if there are any local resources that we should know about. Yeah, we need to check into that. These are the questions that everyone asks eventually. How much will all of this cost? And how do you pay for it? In truth, it's hard to say. Depending on your senior's medical needs and independence level, the cost of housing and care varies. There are a number of local and national resources available to support seniors and their caregivers. Depending on the type of Medicare coverage a senior has, Medicare can help offset many costs. There are also education programs like the State Health Insurance Assistance Program, or SHIP, which is a free and impartial counseling program for people with Medicare. If your senior loved one has private insurance, some services may be covered. Check with your insurance provider. If your aging loved one has a condition where they may require long-term care, you can look into the Indiana Long-Term Care Insurance Program, also known as the Partnership Program. This program is an innovative partnership between the state of Indiana and private long-term care insurance companies. Indiana has taken the lead in helping residents protect their hard-earned savings from the high cost of long-term care. If your aging loved one is a military veteran, then they may be eligible for discounts on health care, utility bills, and social service providers. AARP members may also be eligible for these and other discounts. The Aged and Disabled and Traumatic Brain Injury Waivers provide an alternative to nursing facility admissions for adults and persons of all ages with a disability. The waivers are designed to provide services to supplement informal supports for people who would require care in a nursing facility. CHOICE is a program that provides home and community-based services for older adults and persons of all ages with a disability. The CHOICE program is designed to provide services for people who are at risk of needing care in a nursing facility. Social Services Block Grant SSBG funds, are used to support a compilation of home and community-based services targeted to lower-income older adults and persons of all ages with a disability. Title III of the Older Americans Act supports home and community-based services to help older adults maintain their health and independence. Title III E funds a variety of programs and services to support family and other informal caregivers. A great source to help you navigate this process is the InConnect Alliance. Reach out to your local InConnect Alliance member to get your questions answered and learn about the options available to you or your loved one. Mom, this house is really getting to be too much for you to take care of. I know, mijo, but you just worry too much. I know, Mom. I just want you to be in a place where things are easier for you. At some point, the time may come to move your loved one to a new residence. Ideally, the person moving will have some time to transition from the old to the new living situation. Relocating aging parents or other loved ones from their memory-filled home to a smaller place in a new community is always a challenge for them and for those who help them. You can help your loved one pack, organize, and move their belongings wherever the move, into the adult child's home, assisted living, or a retirement community, you'll want to make the transition as seamless as possible. However, more often than not, something happens that forces changes to be made in a short amount of time, such as a serious health issue, or the death of a spouse. This may leave your family scrambling and reacting to the situation. Thinking ahead is important so that when the time comes, you can make the best of a difficult situation. As you think about providing ongoing care for your senior loved one, remember that keeping their needs and preferences in mind is a top priority. Plan ahead as much as possible so that everyone is prepared as changes take place. To help further prepare, be sure to take a look at the other helpful videos in this series. And remember, the InConnect Alliance is here to guide you toward the right care for your elderly loved ones. Thanks for watching.